things you'll need to accomplish this project are, of course, soldering gun, solder and flux, small pliers, clippers, small tool to pick up little things, and you need multimeter later when you soldered everything and some heat shrink tubing a thin one and a bit thicker one 3d printed parts and of course the microcontroller and the piezo buzzer and the Step up voltage converter and some wiring. It's very convenient to use old IDE computer cable, the one which has multi strand tiny wires. So it's very convenient for soldering low current parts of the circuit and maybe a bit thicker wires for higher current power cabling inside the unit and a few other little things like a MOSFET transistor and all these things we will need to solder to your microcontroller the micro switch 3D printed button red is good color couple of plastic washers 3d printed with tiny screws and some bolts and nuts and these are fit sticky fit we'll be using at the end because we will be using heat shrink tubing a station like this is very convenient. It's not just soldering gun, but also the hot air gun. This is a cheaper model from Amazon. The one more tool, very convenient to remove insulation from the wiring. And regarding the micro switch, you need to cut just a tiny bit the very ends of its three feet. So it fits well. inside the enclosure. So idea is it has to sit low enough then when you can put the top with the red button inside close down there is no play but it clicks. Other preparations you want to make sure the buzzer sits properly and you may need to shave just a little bit on this side so that when you close the enclosure and put a bolt here there is no gap so you can actually completely secure and close the enclosure very critically your microcontroller which for now doesn't have feet soldered in you place it uh, this way and the critical part is it has to go inside this gap you have to make sure it fits in these two gaps and you have to make sure it is close enough the USB connected to the surface that when you connect it to the micro USB cable it powers up. You have to test it with uh, your computer so not just powers up but you can actually program it when it's inside the enclosure. Uh, a tip you may end up shaving just a tiny bit of PCB and maybe the tiny bit at the corners here so it 
it's properly without any play and it sinks inside these gaps and it's very secure and that allows me to use this washer to put it on top to secure at the end when I'm done with soldering and similarly you want to make sure the voltage converter I place it this way goes in this gaps and it securely sits there. You may have to use a little bit of force to put it in. Again a tiny bit of shaving of the board and some shaving of the plastic is all what you need to do. And another washer will be used to at the end secure it on the bottom part of the enclosure. And uh, we are ready to start soldering. So let's do that.
everything soldered double check verify it with the schematic it's time to test so the plus of the buzzer is not soldered yet so we're not gonna get deafened by the loud sound and we attach the voltmeter to the output of the step up voltage converter and we're going to power up the circuit with the micro usb I programmed the microcontroller with the buzzer testing mode, so which means when I press the switch, it will try to turn on the buzzer, so we'll see some voltage if everything works okay. Okay, we got see 14 volts, and now it's time to adjust voltage. We want to have it around 23 volt. Something like this. We press the button goes to zero. Eventually. And if we press again it goes to 23 volt. Okay. It's time to solder the plus wire from the buzzer. Voila! Soldered. It's time to test the buzzer. Connecting and the buzzer test. It seems to be working. battery test everything is assembled you can see the green LED which means it has connected to Wi-Fi and buzzer should work now okay I uploaded the actual water sensor code let's test if it works This lights up, which means it's connected to Wi Fi. Of course, I need to turn on the power. It's Wi Fi, and you can see the new item appeared here Unsweet. This sensor will be used Unsweet. Now, let's test if this thing can detect a water leak. Let's pour just a little bit of water. So you can see this is still grayed out and I'm trying to detect water. And you can see it became blue. Now if you press the red button, go silent for 30 seconds. 30 seconds later, White time is over and it's still detecting water. Once you move it away and you see dark blue is gone. Finally, let's see what happens if you have more than one sensor. They're both connected to Wi-Fi. This is a unit I built, the very first one. And let's use this one to detect water. They are both detecting water. And if on any of them I press red button, they both go silent, but the culprit is still flashing. So it works as expected, and as usual, my smart home has the indication unsweet water leak.